Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with us. I have Mark Hopkins. He is the Chief Technical Officer for Vertoken. Uh, dot io. Mark, welcome back to the show. How have you been? Been really good. How about you? I think I'm going to be okay. All right. Give us some background on Vertoken, your background as being the Chief Technical Officer, and I want to get into some of the questions, the STO that you're bringing out, and what you're doing with uh, Vertoken that's going to really impact uh, cryptocurrencies, blockchains, things of that nature. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Veritoken is it's a project that I've been kind of laboring on for the last uh, about a year and a half now almost. Uh, and it's it came out of kind of the startup incubator space here in Dallas and has expanded to be kind of a global team. It's uh, specifically we're have we have a mission to secure and verify the world's information. We're trying to allow people the ability to own their own data which is uh, something that is uh, desperately needed. Uh, it's, it's, we, every day that goes by, there's another data breach. I think there was one a couple days ago with Facebook. Uh, there's a very famous Cambridge Analytica scandal, uh, the uh, Equifax uh, data breach. All over the place, companies that have giant data silos have proven themselves to be unworthy stewards of large amounts of information. Our goal is to use blockchain and NFT technology to allow that whole data storage paradigm to be turned on its head to allow individuals to own and monetize their own data and not have to trust these big organizations to be good stewards of their data. I understand the own it part. Let's talk about the monetization model. Okay. Yeah, well, um, the idea here is, uh, and there's a, a variety of, of paradigms. I'm going to start with uh, one of the original use cases. Uh, which was the, the, the use case around verifying a resume. That's kind of where the idea for this whole thing came together was, hey, I, there's, a, there's a lot of fake resumes, resumes with poor data on them uh, in the job market or in, in, uh, for, that our HR people have to sift through. What if you could get resumes that were pre-qualified with uh, credentials, skill sets, degrees, that sort of thing? So if I have a... Uh, a degree from TCU, which is one of our partners uh, at Veritoken, they're one of the data Oracle partners we have. They can say, okay, you as a student of TCU, you went here, you got a you got an MBA uh, for a small fee. We will sell you a blockchain record that you have under your control that proves that you got a, a TCU MBA. So now you can go parade that to any place that you want to go get a job or any place where you need that MBA as a qualification for something you want to do, in effect, monetizing your own data. That, that's one particular use case where the monetization angle is just getting a job. Uh, another uh, example that we've worked with, there's a uh, company out in Ohio that is kind of a, a broker for medical data. And let's a big issue within the world of medical research is trying to find qualified research subjects. Um, it's, a, it's a big expense. It's part of one of the big challenges that colleges and uh, studies undergo as they're trying to bring new medicines and research to market. Um, if you were to, let's say, put your genome on the blockchain, right? So you go to 23andMe, you say, okay, I want to get, I wanna get my, uh, my genome sequenced. 23andMe, can you sell me a blockchain record with my genome on it? so that I can list it and put a little flag up that says, yes, I want to be in research studies where my genetic markers say I qualify to be in this study. And you can then be available and, and dramatically cut costs for the, you know, the searching part of all these research studies and then directly monetize whatever it is that the, let, let these studies offer you money to participate in them, whatever that is, whether it's just uh, utilizing your data or actually asking you to like test a drug or whatever it is they're doing. That's interesting. Give me an example of how to monetize that for coming the other direction, let's say a corporate direction, because you're talking about consumer up. What about corporate down? Uh, that's a good, that's, that's, a, that's a really good uh, question. So that's um, my job. Just kidding. Yeah. So the, the coming at it from the, the, the consumer up, it gives you a framework of why the consumer is going to want to be in this business because they, if owning their data has a benefit and monetizing the data has a benefit, 
But on the other side of things, if you are a corporation, you've got to be looking at Europe right now and be looking at the whole GDPR mess that just went through. Essentially, Europe has passed what is in effect a corporate death penalty. Uh, so we ran the numbers, uh, and if the Cambridge Analytica scandal had happened on European shores and had concerned European citizens, the fine that would have been mandated and imposed by GDPR on Cambridge Analytica would have been in excess of the world's total circulating supply of money. It would be in the quadrillions. That would be, in effect, a corporate death penalty. So if you're an American corporation, you're looking at what's going on in Europe, you know that's got to be coming to America. There's been congressional hearings uh, once a month for the last six months, somewhere around this topic. And so you're and, and, and the big new oil rush or, or, or is is data like data is the new oil. That's what everyone's trying to collect and monetize. So on the one hand, you've got an incentive to continue to collect data. But on the other hand, you've got this looming potential death penalty over your head. What we're offering to large corporations is a way to monetize data that if GDPR were enacted in America, would be completely GDPR compliant. Okay, that makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. Now, um, your CEO, Annie, wrote a uh, Bill of Rights. Do you, can you give us a, some kind of a description about what that Bill of Rights was saying and how it works for the common man or, say, industry? Yeah, so uh, the event where we met, uh, the BitBlock boom last year, uh, the, 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 the piece of my speech, the big thrust of my speech that I gave uh, up there was that it doesn't matter if you're working on enterprise stuff or if you're working on the cryptocurrency side. If you're working in blockchain, there's an inherently uh, political aspect of what you're doing, whether you like it or not. You just kind of have to learn that and deal with it. Um, and I won't go into the whole 20-minute speech because we're probably on time for that. But the... The, the, the thing that I wanted to take from that speech and uh, infuse into Veritoken this year was that uh, negative rights, the right for protection, is essentially something that uh, is coming our way when it comes to data. That's what GDPR is. That's what the winds of change on Capitol Hill are saying. There's going to be some sort of state-imposed consumer protections around data rights. Now, in, in my mind, I'm very much, uh, let's not create rules and laws that hinder business, right? Because that's, that's bad for everybody when business suffers. So those rights should not come at the expense of business, in my opinion. The corporate death penalty is highly punitive. I understand why Europe did it. I understand the cultural reasons why Europe went that way, because it's, it's inspired by a lot of history in Europe, uh, and that's just kind of the way their governments work. But in America, we have the option. We're at a crossroads. We can say, look, we want to protect, we want to protect consumer rights. We want to do it in a way that doesn't kill off American business. That's the hallmark of our nation is the ability to innovate and create a great and strong economy. So every one of those rights uh, echoes the sentiments of the GDPR, but we tried to reframe it in a way that they were negative rights. That is, does not require something of a corporation or another individual. And uh, what I mean by negative rights are uh, a negative, an example of a negative right would be the right to free speech. Me saying stuff doesn't take anything away from you. Uh, a positive right would be like the right to healthcare, right? If I have the right to healthcare, that means somebody has to provide that healthcare and that there's a, there's a co social cost to that. So everything that we put in that global uh, data bill of rights is a negative right that we can we can feel like we can enforce via blockchain now I, I don't mean to cut you off but we only have so much time left and i want to get this other sure. question in uh what is an nft and how does it help people nft is a is a wonderful concept uh that has emerged uh mostly from the ethereum ecosystem but it's spreading across uh uh, permission ledgers, block, public blockchains, private blockchains all over the place. NFT stands for non-fungible token. And very simply, uh, if you were to take all the tokens and cryptocurrencies and uh, pieces of uh, tokens in the world, you, you, can, you can carve them up two different ways, fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens. And if you're talking in the world of analog, an example of a fungible token would be like a dollar bill or a quarter or a penny. 
every other quarter in the world with few exceptions is worth exactly 25 cents regardless of the year it was minted in or you know what how scratched up it is uh, that's like also bitcoin is a great example of a fungible token an example of a non-fungible token would be uh, uh, like a deed to a car or a deed to a house the, the, all those deeds look alike they have a standard data format but they they have different worths like your deed to your car is different from the deed to my car because we drive different types of cars. So uh, non-fungible tokens on in the context of blockchain allow you to deed physical or digital objects, be that identity, uh, deeds to property, or deeds to or actual having the deed wrapped in the data itself. Wow, that's a, that's that's quite a, a few things to think about when you when you put that out there. That could change a lot. Yeah, but it changes. I think the real estate industry and anything that's going to be transferring a value is going to be real big on on that one, don't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the the biggest industry that's the softest target for us is supply chain. It's a trillion dollar global market, yep. uh, and if you, I mean, think of, you go up and down uh, the aisles of Walmart or Target or something like that. Every can of beans, every shirt on a hanger that could have its own non-fungible token and as it moves around it interacts with the inventory control system and you can see on the blockchain at any given point where that inventory is it creates a single ledger accounting system for inventory not just money and that goes for new and used goods wow that's amazing right, right. mark thanks for being a guest on today's show we only had so much time and i i really want to delve back into this and uh uh Tell uh, Ann that uh, we said hi. Have her come back on the show when we can. I'd love to have her on the show, too. And, again, I want to thank you for being on the show with us. And I, I also think I'd, I'd like to make a couple of introductions to you. So stick around after uh, we close out and say goodbye to the audience. I'll, I'll uh, want to talk to you a little bit before we sign off, okay? Absolutely. You've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with us. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.